I almost made us go live. Hello. Hey, everybody. Uh, we are rusty. Are we rusty or what, Jamie? <laughs> oh, okay. Somebody popped in. So we're not, okay. <laughs> hopefully we're not no, as rusty uh, as we think. We were having technical difficulties. So hopefully everybody will be uh, pouring in now and we can get going. Welcome, everybody. We'll give everybody a minute or two to get oriented. Um, and we prepared this live at the last minute. So there'll probably be less people than usual, but we made our plan today, didn't we, Jame, on how we're going to get back to doing our lives here. Yes. So we know that a lot of people are missing them and um, want questions answered, updates, and, you know, just want to know what's going on. So we want to provide that for you. Um, and we're excited about this. We actually miss doing these a lot. So um, <laughs> I know it's a classic thing, right? We have yeah. gotten ourselves so busy that we had them on the schedule and then we canceled them before we did them. And I said to Jamie two or three days ago, let's just do it for fun. It, it, let's just get back to doing it. And, uh, you know, we haven't been able to connect with you all. And that's really what we're here to do is the most Absolutely. important thing. So we're, we're psyched to see everybody here. And we're going to talk about summer. Um, and Jamie can share details. I have a new summer program and we are not here to sell you the summer program, but we are here to let you know that the um, summer program is available. But what we want to do here is give you some strategies to be able to really build some momentum during the summertime. So yeah, you can put questions into the chat box. So if you've not been here live with us before, um, you are welcome to put a question in the chat box and we will be um, answering them. And we have ideas already prepared on how to help you get through summer and have an amazing summer, but then really build momentum into the fall. Uh, hey, David, it's so good to see you again, too. We're both literally psyched. Jim, what are you doing over there? <laughs> my, my, for some reason, everything is frozen and I'm trying to, uh -huh. if, if it the cord moves just a touch it <laughs> everything doesn't, doesn't like me. uh hey armando nice to see you it's so good to be back day 32 for blue to calrissian i like it um day 32 rock it out keep keep pushing the streaks out um we've got people from great britain let's see what we got day two and just uh, so y'all know, this this live is, you know, not only for y'all, but it definitely is for us as well. Um, so, you know, therapeutic, we, isn't it? It is. We're really glad to to be here again. So um, thank you all for attending. And um, I guess we should wait another minute or so and then. Yeah. Know, and I can start answering some questions and then uh, we'll answer. I see we have a question. Um, from Corey Coleman, which is a very big question, but we'll start answering a couple of questions here. And then do I hear feedback? Is your speaker playing out loud? No, it's through my, I turned my fan off and. No, I hear like myself in feedback, which I don't know, but hopefully it's not bothering anybody else. So, you know, that is my voice being reflected back to me is driving me crazy. <laughs> I Are y'all? Is everybody else hearing any feedback, or can you hear us? I can, I'll keep talking, but I I hear like an echo. Okay, so um, the question from Corey Coleman is how to stop porn habit for good. I make it to two weeks and I relapse, and I want to quit for good. Okay, if you make it to two weeks and you relapse, the reality is you are not implementing a defense strategy while you're putting an offensive strategy together, and. That's what's in the 90 day program that I offer. And, you know, someone has re sort of recently told me that my YouTube channel is more like a library where you can go and you can find support on what you need. But the program is like signing up for a university course where you're walked through the course with learning objectives from beginning to end. And so I'll just give you the one liner here, which is, you know, the program and the the methodology behind the madness that I offer here that actually creates success is, you know, it's really important to unwire the brain pattern that's pushing you into the screen while the screen pulls you. So that unwiring is the defense. The defense means you get a blocker and we're partnering now with Remojo, R-E-M-O-J-O. -O. We have a special link that Jamie can post somewhere if she's able to do that. Um, 
I partner, I hardly partner with any um, companies because I only partner with companies that I can really fully get behind, which is very few of them. Um, but Remojo is a company that has other porn recovery coaches that offer courses in Remojo. It's has accountability to it. It has blocking features on all devices and it has a community in it as well. So it's, it's a really great option with people that I like collaborating with, with resources that are great. So we've been kind of putting all of our support for a blocker behind Remojo and it ends up being, I think at the lowest it's $5 a month for a really great service. So that, that is a number one thing you can do is just start putting some fences up, figure out where you need fences, defense. You got to run defense to get anywhere. But if you're relapsing two weeks later, you don't have a good defense and you probably don't have any offense. And so let me just talk about the rewiring part. The rewiring part is you have to change your lifestyle. Your life must change. If you live the same life, you will be in the same routines and habits that your life is now founded on, which includes pornography. So if you just go, I'm going to stop watching porn, but I'm going to live my life the exact same way, you'll just be white knuckling it, or you'll just be kind of set up to be challenged all along. Where if you go, I'm quitting, but these are the changes I'm going to make. I'm going to join something. So I have connection with other people. I'm going to fill the holes in my schedule where I used to watch porn. Now, instead, I'm going to watch uh, you know, a show that I like and I can start thinking about, I'm going to get this big project going. So I have something in my mind. I'm going to make sure I'm not fantasizing. Instead, I'm going to plan a trip that gets me excited, healthy fantasy about the thing I'm going to create in my life. And those are some strategies for rewiring. The more you do, the better, the 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 more changes, they don't have to be massive changes. There just has to be enough small changes and, what? and just healthy stress regulation, figuring out how to de-stress in a healthy way. What were you going to say, Jane? I was just going to say that, that saying that um, insanity is when you um, it, do the same thing every day and expect different results. So it is absolutely, you know, changing. Totally. If you're not getting, possible. yeah, if you're not getting new outcomes, you're not changing enough. And I even do this in my own life. When I get caught in something, I'll be like, why does this keep happening to me? You know what I mean? It's like, it's not happening to me. It's coming from me because there's a broken piece of my formula. So, um, you know, so look at your formula and the, the hardwiring part is what do you really want your life to look like? Set the goals. on What do you want your life to look like now? Have the courage and courage can only be exercised in the face of fear. Exercise the courage to create that life for yourself and take the action steps towards that life. And that's how you change your lifestyle. It can guide. It's the GPS for how you rewire your brain. Um, let's see. So with with regards to that, there's a question about can you explain how um, a neurotransmitter works and how yeah, does it affect it, our brain function? Like how I just put it up there. Uh, yeah. we're, we're getting back in the flow here, Jane, um, is that, yeah. So the way that I think of brain performance and brain performance patterns in an easy peasy way is to think about electrical energy. And I talk about that all the time on this channel. I talk about how your brain is going extra fast and extra slow simultaneously. It's the pendulum effect. You're, you're swinging between strung out and overwhelmed, anxious and fatigued and unmotivated. That's the pendulum effect. And what that does in terms of neurotransmitters is that it spikes cortisol and it creates a dopamine deficit. And especially if you're going into the screen, we know the screen causes a decrease in dopamine and an increase in cortisol when you're not in it. And it creates this massive flood of dopamine when you are. So your brain just gets trained to go back into the screen to feel good. And then eventually it gets trained to go into the screen to not feel bad. And then that's when you have a real problem. So the goal is to help you bring the electrical energy into the middle, calm, focus, flow, the zone. And if you're in the middle, you don't have to calm yourself down and you don't have to stimulate yourself. You don't feel the need to. And that changes the neurotransmitter cascade. So you have lower levels of dopamine that your brain needs, the healthy levels, 
and there's serotonin for happiness. There's oxytocin for connection. Of course, there's lots of others, but that's the, the main thing. So thinking about the electrical energy and how it changes your neurotransmitter cascade. And then of course, bring it all the way back to your behavior. So when you no longer go into the screen, you're going to rewire your brain. There's not going to be that deficit and you're going to feel better. Um, oh, David, thank you for the donation. I really appreciate it. I have been thinking about you and how much I appreciate you and not because of the donations, but that is so generous. And I know Jamie and I both appreciate it. We absolutely do. And um... yeah, Raj, Raj, it looks like Raj wants to up David, right? <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> All right. So I have a um, question that's not on there, but um, I think he actually posted it here too. But I'm mm -hmm. on this journey for the last five months. I suspect I have PIED, so porn mm -hmm. induced erectile dysfunction. The flat line comes and goes after some time. The PIED is not gone yet. Please tell me what I can do. Do I need to wait to get it out to get out of PIED? Uh -huh. So, okay. So, um, somebody else put here about erectile dysfunction. I'll put that up just in case. It's a good uh, reference so that people can um, anchor into this idea. And I know this is a tricky one. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear the actual answer because there is no super quick fix. But it doesn't have to be a really long fix. And again, more is more. The more things that you do to heal the reward center in your brain, then the better your brain is going to work faster. So let me explain how porn induced erectile dysfunction happens in the real quick version and then what we can do about backing it out and healing your brain. So porn induced erectile dysfunction happens because when you go into the screen and especially when you couple it with masturbation, which is basically what everybody does, you're giving your brain this intense mental stimulation and intense physical stimulation. And it creates tons of dopamine flowing through your brain and just as an aside, when I work with people in Muse coaching, which we offer Muse coaching, I can see what it does to people's brains. I show you and I know the people who have seen it in their brains are literally dumbfounded at how fried out their brains are after a porn session. It's like your brain is so loosey goosey that it can't even do anything. So you're frying out the reward center with the intensity of the mental and physical stimulation. So now it's time to be with a human partner who isn't at these high levels and your brain, it doesn't even register in the reward center in your brain and you can't get an erection. You can't get or stay aroused without massive mental and physical stimulation. And I've had lots of conversations lately with people about the role of fantasy and masturbation in sex with their partner and trying to keep it out is the thing to do in the short run because you're giving yourself that mental and physical stimulation that you're used to. And you might use it as a bridge strategy to get you to the point where you can be with your partner and not need to get that stimulation. But the reason that happens is because you fried the reward center. So that reward center doesn't come back online quickly. The things to do are stay out of the screen. Then heal your brain. So time doesn't just do that. And time is one piece. It's time and training. So give yourself enough time to heal, but then do the things that you need to, to heal the defense, stay out of the screen, stay out of fantasy, stay away from masturbation. I actually just recorded a podcast, um, on guilt and masturbation. I'm in the midst of doing another one because People don't understand the role that masturbation plays. They think it's fine, except for if they're fantasizing and masturbating still, you're giving your brain all that high level stimulation, which is going to prolong the PIED. So the healthy thing to do is recalibrate your brain to get lower levels of dopamine and to feel good about it. And so you can do that in your sex life and you can do it in your actual life. The way to do it in your sex life is enjoy being with your partner and of course make it as rousing as you can with the two of you but in a healthy connected way and don't go to fantasy and don't add a lot of physical masturbation stimulation how you do it in your real life is you set up a project that your brain can go to and that you get a little dopamine hit all the time when you're thinking about doing it and 
So then, you know, you do a little bit of it and it's like, oh, you get a little dopamine hit and then you do a little bit more. And then when you accomplish it, you get a big dopamine hit. And so, and actually the program that we offer is an executive function project because yeah. through 90 days, you're learning all this new stuff, you're implementing it and you're feeling better and you're getting psyched about yourself, little tiny steps. And then when you're done with the program and you're feeling better, big dopamine, not as big as porn, obviously healthy dopamine, which is really cool. And, and one of the things uh, that and libido comes back too, because you've taught yourself to bring your libido back at healthy levels. Sorry, Jane, go ahead. I was just going to say one of the things that that is in your program that that helped me was when I when I write down my goals in the in the morning and then when I go to check them off I'm so excited because I'm you know checking those things off and and they are obtainable they are not you know they have to be obtainable um so you can check them off and get those those Definitely every check mark and a lot of the people I work with in neurofeedback coaching or in muse coaching I have them do checklists because those little check marks, it's amazing how dopamine producing they can mm -hmm. be. Check. I did that. Check. I did that. And then before you know it, you've check marked your way through small dopamine hits all day long. And at the end of the day, when you look back and actually I just bought myself, my daughter Fiona has been trying to steal it. I have to use it. It's like on my, uh, we have this apothecary table. I need to put it on my nightstand because I bought this new journal that it's like a nightly reflection journal. And I have a really tight morning routine and then my nights kind of break down. I have a, an evening routine to chill out, but I don't really have a good gratitude in the evening. And this little journal is like, you know, three gratitudes for the day. Anything that's left in my mind, which I do this as an exercise, I dump out anything that's left in my mind at the end of the day so I can sleep well without things floating around in there. So, you know, when you do that, you have goals and gratitudes and that makes for a lot of good dopamine for sure. Benjamin, thank you for your donation. I, we, we appreciate that. Um, thank you, and, Benjamin. And very just much. so y'all know that, you know, any donation goes into um, our nonprofit to be able to mm -hmm. educate um, others on this um, horrible addiction. And, um, you know, this is a tsunami that is going to hit the world. And um, Dr. Lee's here to talk about it. And, and, you know, so we can provide free programs for churches, doctors, therapists, parents, kids. Mm -hmm. um, so your question is um, ADHD. Will Adderall help? And will it, will it not help if it's something I do to cause it? No. So like, okay. So Adderall, when it comes to ADHD and Adderall, the ADHD brain pattern, most people it's misunderstand it, but and then I talk about porn induced ADHD. So if anybody who doesn't struggle with ADHD, don't tune out because this is important to you. And I'm going to tell you how in a second. If you're born with ADHD, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder or challenge. Like I don't like love the word disorder. So it's a neurodevelopmental means, means your brain was born making too much slow speed. Theta, that slow speed over here that I'm always talking about in my videos. So your brain's running slow. What Adderall does is it stimulates it and it speeds it up for the time that it's in your system. Long story short, it should help your cause in the beginning. And then if you use the Muse headband, which is what I've been helping people for years with neurofeedback, with the Muse and with our premier neurofeedback, many times people can reduce and get off their medication because they're training their brain to make less slow speed. So, and there's research that shows Adderall can help in the short run but may not be necessary in the long run. And that's the really quick takeaway. Now, if you feel like you have ADHD, that's why I've kind of coined the term porn induced ADHD, because we know from the science that porn slows down your frontal lobe. It decreases functioning. Decreasing functioning makes low power and too much slowing, too much theta. So the thing is a lot of people tell me I just was diagnosed with ADHD and I will write them back. That's not a thing. Acquired ADHD is not a thing. It's neurodevelopmental. You're born with it. So if you've acquired ADHD, then it's because you've acquired the ADHD type of pattern because of something you've been doing in your life. And porn is the something that most people are doing that's giving them ADHD brain pattern. So the reality is you have the ADHD brain pattern. It just isn't organic. It's a thing that you've accidentally been doing to yourself, which is another reason I'm here because People are knocking out their frontal lobes and they're not able to do the work that they want to do. They're not motivated. They become angry and irritable. Executive function lies in the frontal lobe. 
So when I encourage you to resensitize that reward center in your brain, in your midbrain, using executive function, you're also healing your frontal lobe, which is when you heal those areas of your brain, your healthy arousal template's going to come back. Your ability to work is going to come back. Your ability to not feel anxious socially is going to come back. Performance anxiety is going to go down. Like those two areas are the ones that are most important. So to go along with that prefrontal um, cortex, uh, it, he says, you know, does pornography affect the prefrontal cortex or our cognitive abilities? And if it does, to what extent? Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what I was just talking about. It decreases function in the prefrontal cortex, which absolutely impairs cognitive abilities. Cognitive means thinking. It makes your ability to think worse. And then specifically, it'll impact socialization, memory, working memory is holding information and memory while you try to work with it. Motivation is a major one. Attention, focus. So, yeah, it is significant, very significant. Somebody asked about the Muse. I'm going to put the link here in the chat. Um, and we also have something that's coming up that we can talk about um, in a little bit. Yeah. And I'm going to put up Jack Roberts question real quick. And this is a, you know, theoretical question, but to me, it's not theoretical at all. And I've made a couple of videos on the ripple effect and Jamie just um, talked about the tsunami. And I promised myself I wouldn't talk about how I'm writing my program into a book until it's done. You know how that goes. I try not to talk about things until they're done, but I have been working on writing the book and I'm on chapter six and there's going to be 10 cha chapters. So I'm far enough in. I followed my own advice. I hired a coach to help me stay organized and to keep me on task. So um, I'm I'm nearing at least the second, you know, I'm in the second half of it. But my point about that is I created this diagram that shows the tsunami effect that's happening from porn. So it's not theoretical. We know from science and research that so many men are watching porn and it affects their relationships. And this is my connection, but you know how that goes. I bet you, I, you, you were here, you heard me say it first, is that women's alcohol consumption has been on the rise over the last decade. And yes, I know alcohol is more popularized, but relationships are more strained in a new way because of porn use just being rampant in men. So women are all stressed out and women are using alcohol more and families are starting to break down. We know in the younger generation, because of performance anxiety and erectile dysfunction, young men are just staying with porn and they're not even venturing into trying to establish relationships because they fear erectile dysfunction that gives them even more performance anxiety. It's this massive ripple effect. Kids are being impacted. I mean, look at when I pull up TikTok, because I've been trying to make TikTok videos, which, you know, Jamie keeps encouraging me. Every time I pull it up on my phone, I seriously feel like Medusa is about to jump out at me and like freeze me in stone with her snake hair. <laughs> and I have to like look away before I see anything that wounds my brain on TikTok for real, because it's just so bad. Like, I'm like, it's just so hypersexualized. So young women are learning the way you get attention is you become the object of such sexualization. Men are learning to objectify and it's just becoming the new norm, but it's, you know, it's going to run rampant. So yes, it's leading to more single people. It's absolutely going to create a strain in relationships. It breaks down communication. So it's not even in theory, it's in actuality. And there was a, um, question about I don't think I can pull it up anymore and actually but. if you let me just say one more thing about that and not to beat a dead horse when you stop using porn this is also I made two diagrams in the book there's the diagram of the tsunami and then there's the diagram of the positive ripple effect of change so people ask me all the time why aren't you going after the porn industry I'm like that's not my jam my jam is showing up and helping each individual person become the best version of themselves because if you create a life that you love so much, you're not trying to escape it, that has this massive ripple effect to all the people in your world. And our clients, we were just in a meeting yesterday where a client told us about how everybody noticed how much better he was getting. And then he fell into relapse because he wasn't doing the program. He fell into relapse and, and one of his family members asked him if he was taking drugs. And I don't know if he's here because he usually comes to the um, live. So probably catch the 
he's probably having that family conversation right now because he said he was going to have to deal with it and tell them that he wasn't on drugs. And I don't know if he was going to divulge the real reason, but like that ripple effect of change, when you stop watching porn and you create those, those action steps to get a job that you love and to be in integrity. And David made a comment about gossip. It is pretty interesting too, because I won't gossip. And sometimes that means that I don't have anything to say to some people. If it, have you ever found yourself in that situation? Mm -hmm. I'll only try to say positive things. And so that can be difficult if you're with people who like to say negative things. So many triggers on TikTok. Like there's triggers for me and I'm just, they just make me want to go into a, a, a Uber work mode trying to help everybody not, you know, act in that way. But well, you can affect the change, you know, change yourself, change the world for real. Just one of the, the stories behind that, um, we saw that somebody was using TikTok videos that were Dr. Lee's and they were, you know, trying to um, get people to sign up for consults. And of course, when, we, when I saw it, you know, I get defensive <laughs> because I'm like, Dr. Lee, you know, they're using your videos. And she's like, it's okay. Let's reach out to them and let's see if we can't collaborate instead of, you know, getting defensive. She's using her integrity and her, you know, so she really does um, what she preaches, you know, is, is absolutely what she follows. And, you know, it, it makes me think about how I'm going to react to something before I react because of that. So, you know, that is, uh, isn't um, it cool when you can choose a new response absolutely. and I'm constantly training myself to do it. It just, I actually practice what I preach. So like I try to show up in, you know, I probably told you all this before on a live that I try to create a situation where everybody wins. If you always do that, you stay in integrity. So by collaborating with that person who ultimately chose not to collaborate and uh, actually I think it took that, feed down because something happened, but, uh, you know, he would win, I would win and the world would win because he actually, that video he put up ended up getting like 10 million views or something. Uh, so, you know, that was becoming a big thing that at least creating awareness. So Christopher, um, how can I deal with loneliness when I am on the recovery journey? Yeah. Thanks for that question, Christopher. I saw it and I was going to get to it if Jamie didn't pull it up because this is really important. And, you know, there's a saying that you can be, hang on, so I don't butcher it. You can be lonely in a crowded room or you can never feel alone even when you are by yourself. And that's really important to establish. So if you feel lonely, figure out a way to connect with other people that feel good to you camaraderie, uh, find like-minded people. And I know it's terrifying, but an easy thing to do is to join something. So when people work with me, I have them join something, even if they don't want to. And once they join something, they are so psyched that they did. And I'll give you a couple examples. I just talked to a gentleman earlier who he told me he loved to sing in church choirs and that, you know, with COVID, there were no choirs. I'm like, find a way to sing. I'll see you next time. He has been going to karaoke and he's been rocking it out and he's been bringing people with him. He's been having a blast. I'm like, so awesome, you know, and that's really safe because he's going with people, finding a safe way to be in, in a place with people that are like-minded is really important. Um, a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people I work with ride bikes. So they, you can join biking clubs anywhere, you know, and in a biking club, or if you think about another type of activity that you can join that kind of goes in this way. You show up, you chat with people for a minute, you ride 10 miles, you chat with people for a minute and you go. It's not like you have to show up and talk to people for an hour and a half. It's you are involved in something, but it's at a level that feels good to you as you're dipping your toe in participation. And then the loneliness start, starts to dissipate. Even if that's too scary, I would really encourage you to do that because that builds a skill of participating in your life and your community. And that I, in coaching, which we're here on the lives trying to provide free coaching for you all, you know, the coaching is we're going to develop skills in you that you can use forever. You develop the skill to go participate, but reach out to people in your world. Start texting people. If you're not a texter, start texting people bitmojis. I text my kids and my friends and Jamie, actually, bitmojis of myself just for fun. And it They're just the keeps cutest. Me connected. They're... It keeps me connected in a in a fun way. 
And I will try to show up and help people in my world do things that are important to them. So like you can find ways to participate. And if you're, if you're someone out there where you're like, I haven't been lonely in 40 years like me, I actually, I don't think I've ever been lonely because I grew up in a family of six kids and now we have six kids. Loneliness is not a thing in my world. <laughs> I'm always creating a lone time. And so like, you know, the, in the end, you're creating a life of balance. You don't allow yourself to be in isolation too much. You're connecting with people. And at the same time, if you need a long time, create that alone time for yourself. So you don't burn out when you're with your people. All right. Here's another one from uh, CJ swag. Um, how long does it take for a neuro pathway to be reactivated? Errat er eradicated, eradicated to get, so to, yeah. Oh, I read it too get, fast. So, to get rid of, so to like get rid of an old neural pathway and to build a new one. Actually, it's, I do know the science on this and there's no one answer. So of course it's like difficult to answer, but this is what I'll, I'll tell you. I just created a podcast. Like is 90 days really a thing when it comes to leaving porn behind? Because what we're talking about is we're letting old neural pathways die off and creating new neural pathways. So, you know, people in the recovery movement use 90 days as a bar for you to establish these new routines and habits that lead to the neural pathways. The only reason we care about the neural pathways is because they allow you to consistently use the new behaviors you're trying to use. So the point is, and I've made a bunch of videos, older videos on this channel where I talk about there's a pathway to the left and there's a pathway to the right. Every time you choose to take the new pathway to the right, you're burning the new neural pathway. Every time you choose not to go down the one to the left, it's dying off. That is the factor that we need to be most concerned about. That's why the, the small action steps you take every day. So let's just say a fantasy thought pops into your mind. And I know somebody else had, how do I get rid of sexual thoughts? If a sexual thought pops into your mind and you throw that thought back out and you ground yourself in your reality, or you think about a healthy fantasy thought, like your upcoming vacation, then you've just chosen the new neural pathway and you've just not chosen the old one and that one dies off and the new one is created. And that's how we keep moving forward. So the reality is you can, you can be killing the old ones and creating new ones every single minute of every single day. Andre's lack of, there we go. Lack of energy, lack of concentration, loss of morning erection, normal when trying to quit porn. Yes. And the answer is easy. It's because if you used to give your brain all this dopamine, it was helping you to do all of these things. It was helping energy, concentration, and erections. The, all that dopamine is what was artificially inducing those things for you. So when you stop giving your brain tons of dopamine, your brain has to rewire itself and recalibrate to be able to have energy concentration and erections at lower, healthier levels. And so when you quit, this is part of the unwiring and rewiring process. That's why the more things that you do, the faster you can get back to the homeostasis uh, or the healthy levels so that you feel great again. But you might experience some of those withdrawal symptoms they really are while you are recalibrating those dopamine levels and those electrical energy patterns and the, the one thing you say that is get comfortable being uncomfortable for a little while and it is and that's challenging and i've been thinking about this a lot lately too i've been telling people like you know how overwhelming is it that when you have a problem that's giving you issues and now you have to join a program and implement all these strategies that give you more issues before you get better. It's like, man, is that a pain in the booty? But at the same time, like that's the process. And so the more you're able to engage in that process and cut out time and dedicate your resources, your time, your energy, and sometimes your money towards it, you can get better faster. So like another suggestion, coaching suggestion here is to create times in your days when you're intentionally working on this stuff because then you'll help the levels come back faster. 
the more is more when it comes to this, more strategies you implement in the little moments and the more you think about it in a concentrated way. And that's why when I put my videos out, I always tell you, get your journal out, think about the thing that I'm telling you, work with it and use it in your life. And if you do that on Monday and Wednesday, and then the podcasts, um, we have been putting the podcast videos out on Saturday, but we're going to put them out on Friday afternoons now. You'll have a video every other day that you can work with for a day and a half. All right. Money, thank you for your donation. So most of the time I face issues in lusting. Please help. Yeah. So lusting is your brain looking for dopamine and trying to get dopamine hits out in the world lusting after body parts. It's really like, you know, the word lust has a lot of power to it, I think. And if you think more of it as it's a call for mood regulation, usually it's your brain going, I need dopamine to feel good. I've trained my brain to get dopamine from body parts. When I'm out, I'm going to look at all those body parts and I'm going to give myself dopamine. That's really what's going on fundamentally. And I'll challenge you to think about when you're lusting, because a lot of times there'll be more lusting, the more stressed out you are, because your brain needs more dopamine. So if there's more stress in your life, there's more cortisol. There's more need to offset that cortisol and the dopamine deficit with more dopamine. And if you're trying to quit porn, what a lot of people notice because of this effect that I'm talking about is that when they stay out of the screen, the lusting goes up. And that's why I give people the lusting strategies to stop objectifying and to get back to grounding yourself in the present and teaching your brain. If you, if you look at somebody, you redirect. And one easy strategy I've been telling a lot of people about is art or nature, art or nature, because anywhere you are, if you get dopamine from a body part, you want to trick your brain into thinking that you're getting it from art and nature, both of which are dopamine producing. So if you look at a body part, you immediately look at art in the room. Most places you are have art in the room. And if you're outside, there's nature. So it can be used universally anywhere. It's an easy to do strategy. And of course, it's not going to work the first time. But if you keep doing it, you'll train your brain to to get dopamine from your environment instead of fantasy. All right, Danny boy, does ejaculation affect muscle mass and testosterone? Also, I just gone on a one month streak, but relapsed twice in the span of a couple days. Is my progress lost? Okay, I'm going to start with the streak question and then we'll, I made a video about the muscle mass and testosterone. So if you search it on this channel, there's two videos, I believe on that topic, but I'll answer it real quick. Also, but let's start with the streak and his progress lost. No progress isn't lost. And going back to that pathway analogy, if you're going down a pathway and there's a rock, it's a new pathway. You've never gone down it. So you're walking down and there's a rock and you trip. That doesn't mean you've gone all the way back to the beginning of that new pathway. It means you've stumbled over a rock in it. So then you keep going and there's another rock. If you haven't learned from the first rock, you'll fall again. So the point is, if you fall over one or two rocks at the beginning of this journey, that's to be expected. This is a new pathway. If you keep falling over rocks, you're not doing what you need to do to successfully go down this pathway. So your progress isn't really ever lost. But if you keep falling, you haven't learned what you need to learn. So you may not have made any progress that you thought you made. You are just walking down a pathway that without the right tools and strategies and support and techniques. So your progress is not lost if you learn from the relapse. So if you've relapsed tw twice, figure it out. Relapses are never out of the blue. They're always generally stressors that make you go back into the screen to get the dopamine. So remember that and think about it after you relapse. Once your brain's clear, once the fog clears a little, what led me back? What can I do different next time? That's how you learn and you stop tripping over the, the rocks. When it comes to muscle mass and testosterone, I'm sure some people will argue the, um, the point of what I'm about to say. And I know there's comments under the videos when I made the video is that, you know, if you're ejaculating a lot with compulsive masturbation, you're not using your body in the, a healthy way. 
So you are taxing the system and you're, you're depleting yourself. And so we know that, and in the, in the video that I made, I talk about the testosterone levels. We know that after a period of abstinence, testosterone levels go up. And that if you keep going longer, it doesn't keep going up exponentially. And what's really cool about the science without getting into the details is that the science supports healthy sexuality when it comes to testosterone and muscle mass. So what it, what it supports is if you are in a relationship, like, you know, I know not everybody is, but most people want to be. So if you're having relational sex with a partner, and actually some of the studies showed that relational sex with a partner led to better levels over time opposed to masturbation. So if you establish healthy sexuality, not only is your brain healthy, but your body is healthy also, which just makes sense because you're, you're kind of sticking to natural design. You're not abusing a system that wasn't meant to be used two or three times a day. Yeah, we were, we were made animalistically by nature, but (laughs) (laughs) that's one of the things that, that I'll say, um, you know, so it's it's natural, but not, you know, yeah, yeah. what's, you know, and that's why eroticism and, and healthy lust going back to the last question, like, you know, healthy lust is good for you. If you have a partner and you're lusting after your partner in a healthy way, not all the time, but in a healthy way, then that's a good way to create arousal. And then if you are in a relationship where you can let your animal nature, you know, let your freak flag fly, I can never say that, while you're with your partner in a safe way, an agreed upon way, that's fun and engaging. And you get, your brain gets what it needs, but then you're not like constantly going back to masturbation for ejaculation. That's just a product of constant pleasure seeking. Dopamine's the pleasure seeking neurotransmitter. If you abuse it, it becomes insatiable. And that's what, you know, we're talking about here with too much ejaculation. All right. Awesome. Should I avoid sex or should I go for it during a porn brain rewire? I am already on NoFap, completed six months. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Um, please tell someone that it is helpful or resistible. Okay. So here's the deal. Again, I'm sorry. I wish I could just tell you the one answer ever, but it always comes with qualifiers. So I think my framework, which is based on neuroscience and working with some of the highest thought leaders in the area of sex addiction and pornography addiction, my thought process is that if you can establish healthy sexuality while you're rewiring your brain, you should. It's easier. And like Jamie said, we are sexual by nature. We were designed to, for, for procreation, we were designed to be in sexual relationships. So trying to avoid that altogether is trying to avoid a healthy pattern. Again, like a takeaway for today is healthy. It's not about good or bad or right or wrong. It's about what's healthy for you. And it's healthy to be in a healthy sexual relationship into adulthood. So if that's where you're at and you can handle it, that's great. But if you are really hyper sexualized and you're lusting all the time out in the world and your brain is just looking for dopamine from sex everywhere, then a sex washout is, is advisable. So you got to check in with yourself like, okay, I've been on no fat for six months and I'm doing great, you know, and I'm interested in someone. And, or if you have a partner, I, if you have a partner, I think partners should try to have physical intimacy during this, this process. So check in with yourself and, and try to gauge where you're at. And Just to talk about that for one second, the first step in improving your emotional intelligence is increasing your self-awareness. So even if you're not perfect at checking in with yourself on where you're at, skill building, we're skill building there. It's self-awareness, self-regulation, then it's social awareness and relationship management. Those are the four pillars of emotional intelligence. So figuring out what's going on with yourself is a skill you have to build too. And if you're really just looking for mood regulation through sex, it's best to give yourself some time. All right. So MHS. Hello, doctor. Will sexual desire get weaker after a, the no flap habit or sh- wh- or we should always endure this pain? No, it goes way, 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 way down. Anybody in my 90 day program will tell you that they didn't believe me also when I told them, but when they started to work the program, 
very quickly, all that hypersexuality starts to go down, but it's absolutely dependent on the unwire and the rewire. So if you're stuck in this place where, and this is the real conversation to be had here, if you're stuck in this place where you have these high levels of lusting and sexual desire, it's because you're not moving down that new neural pathway that we talked about. You think you're making progress, but you're actually just spinning your wheels. And that is why I'm here, because that's where a lot of people who say, I'm going to quit, then they don't know how to quit. They don't have the strategies. They, they literally don't know what to do to further themselves down that road. And, and that's why I made the programs. And that's why I'm showing up here to try to give you the tools so that you don't just spin your wheels and stay in this place of extreme sexual desire. So you will not have to endure it. It should go away quickly. And I, or for some people, it's not super quick, but it can go away quickly with the more strategies. And I like to share um, a, a really cute comment. One of the guys in my 90 day small group coaching, he asked, he's like, you know, when am I going to feel flatline or when am I going to feel, you know, all this desire? And he had already been in for a couple of months. And I'm like, you won't, you, you didn't experience it back in that unwire rewire time frame. So you know, that didn't happen for you because you doubled down on using the strategies out of the gates, which he did. And he's doing amazing. He's he is. I just talked to him last week and he's like just got the foundation set for success. And he's going to protect that foundation of all the new lifestyle and strategies. He's got himself a job that he loves, asked for a raise. He's on vacation right now. If he's listening. He's you know doing all the right things, using the Muse headband, set up a meditation habit, told his wife has been talking to his wife about his issues, cleaned up family trauma, like, you know, literal unwire, rewire, hardwire. Amazing. So then now he's got the foundation, he's protecting it. I had somebody say that, you know, I, I don't have any, you know, trauma or any type of family dysfunction. And, and, um, anyway, the, working with him for for he he went through the program uh ordered the muse i told him to start using it he's having you know some severe anxiety still and fear of failing um and one of the things i asked him i said you know were your parents really strict on you in making good grades and he said yes they were and i said mm -hmm. that's where your trauma comes in it's that fear mm -hmm. of disappointing them and you know it's i said you know continue using that headband and he gave me this raving review um, <laughs> the other day and he was like, it's working. And it just was an amazing. Um, well, it's wild. Know, you can't see your own patterns at the just beginning. Just to get that like, feedback. Yeah. That's the self-awareness is like, and I do that with people all the time. I'm like, okay, tell me about, uh, you know, and, and trauma is a big word. I don't love the word trauma either. That's why I like to use dysfunction, you know, and I say that dysfunction comes in all magnitudes, shapes and flavors, you know, so like it's really about your programming and how you learn to show up in the world. And we all learned in different ways. And then, you know, getting rid of your programming isn't always the solution. It's learning to make your programming healthy. Like, you know, I was shocked me, shocked me. I was taught as a kid that if I worked and produced, it got me good attention. You know, so I was conditioned to become a worker and I have five brothers and sisters who are not conditioned to be workers. So that's just personality type. That's why I talk about the Enneagram personality type. That's how I learned to show up in the world to feel safe and to survive. And so you wouldn't consider that dysfunction, but it's definitely a pattern that's informed my life. And so I am always working at balancing my life, not working too much. And then I always talk about my husband who, yes, is golfing again today. You know, my husband's the opposite. He He's a play hard kind of guy. I'm a work hard kind of girl. So the cool thing is, is that then now we balance each other. He works harder if then, not because I make him, because I inspire him. And then I play more because of him. And we bring this balance to each other because, you know, I, we also know those are our patterns. Which is why Jamie will enjoy seeing him in the office on Wednesdays from now, <laughs> which is what he's been saying, you know, so it's interesting to learn about your own programming when you can see it. Yep. All right. Um, how to get away from immediate temptation and how long it takes to completely uh, to get back to a healthy brain. Yeah. Immediate temptation, you know, learning what you're, what, 
our triggers for you. Again, self-awareness. So one of the first things we try to introduce the idea and teach people is what are your triggers? And yes, they're everywhere. So, you know, if your immediate temptation comes when you're in TikTok, well, don't go on TikTok because it is attempting or like, you know, and people are so sweet, you know, I've, I'm, I don't know if any of these people would be here, but this is a common theme. You know, they're like, I go to the beach with my friends every weekend, you know, tape temptations everywhere. I know. Stop going to the beach every weekend. Like it's not, you know, it's a no brainer pun intended. If you just think about what are your goals? You know, if these are your goals, you can't go to the beach where there's people are in bikinis and men are in, you know, everybody's scantily clad. That's not the place to be on this journey. So recognizing environments you're putting yourself in, people who are triggering, and that goes back to putting up the fences for yourself. And you do it for yourself because you're like, I'm going to make it so that I'm not in these places that trigger me. And then how long to get back to a healthy brain? That's, again, totally matters on what you're doing. So when people are in the 90-day program, if they're actively in it, and of course, there's so many variables. If there's tons of trauma, there's more trauma that needs to be dealt with. If you really live in a life that the way you're living it right now needs to be massively overhauled, then there's more rewiring that needs to happen. So there's just so many variables. But what I will tell you is that by 90 days, the people in the program really have a really good sense of what work needs to be done and they're well on their way. Most people are out of the screen really quickly and they're working on masturbation, which is why I started to make the masturbation videos to support people there because that's been the theme for all of the people in the program. It's like, okay, I'm okay with the screen, but I can't stop masturbating. What's going on and how do I do that? And fantasy. So come out of porn, then out of fantasy, done with masturbation, know what they need to do, start using the headband, get all the parts of their day. And then, you know, like the gentleman I was talking about, he was in the program for less than a year. And he's like, I've been in really good shape for months now. Like what, what happens from here? And he's going to keep coming to the group meetings and keep the foundation. And then really, once you do that, the only thing that threatens to rock your world is a major stressor. And again, I talked to a lot of people like about this. My dad died and I'm feeling a real draw into the screen. And that's because your system is wonky. It's all over the place because of stress. It's stressed out and it's overwhelmed. Pendulum effect. Double down on your foundation. Give yourself grace and empathy. Do lots of stress regulation activities. Tip the scales to take care of yourself during that time. And then as you heal from that massive stressor, or, you know, I've been talking in my small group group this week. We talked about regression and in, not regression, recession and inflam. <laughs> I keep wanting to say regression and inflammation. <laughs> recession and inflation, inflation and recession, money, the almighty dollar, because we're moving into stressful financial times, possibly seemingly, especially with gas. I, you know, I drive a gas guzzler and I'm trying to figure out with you know, six beautiful children, how to keep everybody, keep them going without, you know, spending a fortune in gas. So like right now is the time to think about that and make a financial plan. So you don't find yourself in financial stress and just going into the screen to escape the financial stresses that are coming our way. Make your plan right now. So and with regards to that word, you know, it, you know, can you feel when your your brain is healing can you can you feel in the the healing time what what is it that 100 percent you can feel and if you're using the muse if you have the muse out there they just did an update so if anybody has noticed the muse is different they're in the middle of a massive update there's a couple glitches and they just sent out a video saying that that uh they've updated the back end and that it's going to be even better so if you use the muse you can see your brain improving which is totally awesome. You know how I love some measurable data. So when you see that measurable data, um, you can feel it. And what I teach people is to feel it and then map it on to those improvements they see in their brain training graphs. And then when you learn that, then on the days you feel anxious, you're like, oh, today is a rougher day. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to have lunch with my friend. I'm going to create time to have coffee and read my book. I'm going to create a little self-care time. 
but you can absolutely feel it. What it feels like is you feel calmer and more focused. You feel less squirrely. You feel less anxious. You feel less ramped up. You feel less unmotivated and like a wet noodle because in the pendulum effect, you feel like you need to be calmed down and you need to be stimulated in the middle. As your brain heals, you totally feel calmer, more peaceful, more focused, less reactive. And people tell me all the time, they're like, I can't believe I'm feeling the differences. And they, people tell me all the time how weird it is. And it's hard to articulate. It's difficult to articulate, but people feel it. Um, we're going to have to, yeah, maybe one more wrap up question if you have one. So, um, I avoid real relationships that would lead to anything sexual and keep going back to porn. Am I crazy? Um, I feel like real relationships other than family and one friend seems hard. 15 years of porn use. Yeah, this is a great question. Thank you for it. Um, Because this is the fear of intimacy at its finest and so twisted that you don't even know that that's what it is. And it happens to so many people. You are not a crazy. You are not crazy and you are not alone. Let me tell you that because I have this conversation all the time is that, and actually one of my clients who I still have to um, connect with was telling me that he went on a date. I was just telling the story yesterday that he went on a date and that when he realized he actually, you know, felt a connection, he bounced from the interaction because he was just used to objectifying women and the, the feeling of intimacy was really off putting. And, you know, it does go, a lot of that does go back to, trauma or dysfunction, because, you know, I, I feel this way too. I, I, you've, you've heard me talk before that I don't go out of my way to create or sustain relationships. And again, I kind of learned it. I learned to be self-sufficient and when I was young. And so like, I take care of my needs and that's kind of why people go back to porn. You can just take care of your own sexual needs. You don't even need anybody else. So you're self-sustaining, but unfortunately that's not how the best life is lived. The best life is lived through connection with others, through vulnerability, through letting the guard down and actually being intimate and allowing other people to help you meet your needs and to, you know, really allow yourself. But at the same time, like, you know, I think family and having one friend is enough. You don't need a thousand friends. And I have lots of people in my life that have a million friends. You know, I have basically, I have my guy friends too, but I, so, you know, there's eight of us that hang out, but I have two girlfriends and that's, I had one girlfriend for the longest time. And then we've added another one to, and which is a beautiful thing. And even then they know they hang out all the time. And I think this is a cool thing about our relationship. Those two hang out all the time. And people have said like, doesn't that make you upset? I'm like, no, because I don't want to hang out all the time. (laughs) So when I show up and hang out the times that I want to, it works for me and it works for them. It's a really great relationship. So finding people that, you know, the relationship works on everybody's terms is really cool. And you might only be able to find that with one or two people, but not allowing yourself to have a physically intimate relationship with a partner in crime. Most people want a partner in crime a partner, a sexual partner, a, a, you know, marriage, which we don't need to talk about that, but a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, that's really important to have the person who sticks by you in all the junk, you know, and my hubby's the only one who knows all the deepest, darkest places of me. You know, that's not something I even share with, actually, I share most of it with my friends, (laughs) but because I am pretty transparent, you know, he shares all his darkest stuff. And then we we are together on the journey. That's a cool thing to do. That's amazing. And allowing yourself to have that is important. Somebody asked about the 90 day program being pricey. I did put the link um, for the payment plan that we, we do offer. Um, and if you use coupon code, you also get um, a little off the, the first payment. Um, let's talk about. And, and I would, program. language is very important to me. Language and cognition go hand in hand. And I know that that program is an investment, but I also know it's a value. And I actually was in a meeting and a guy said he, he offers um, a, a porn addiction recovery program. And he's like, my program's pricey. And I said, how much is it? And, you know, his program actually was a lot more than mine is. 
it's a different type of program, but like pricey is an opinion kind of statement. You know, what's pricey to one isn't pricey to another. I feel really confident about what you get out of that program. And I think it's priced fairly and it allows us to be able to give personal attention to people in it who want that attention. And so when you make that investment and I'm not undermining that it costs, I get that. And I've been there. And I actually started to tell the story in the book that I'm writing that I can remember purchasing the first digital program for myself on, you know, self-actualization and transformation. And I remember how nervous I was to make that investment because I had never paid for something to improve myself. And I can't imagine if I if I didn't like have courage in the face of fear to buy that. That was like 30 years ago, you know, and I've been buying them ever since. I'm always in a program. I'm always investing in myself. I always feel it like you feel it. I'm like, man, do I want to pay this for this? And then, you know, if I if I get the value out of it, I feel like I've invested well. And so when you join the 90 day program, you get to walk through it from beginning to middle, middle to the end. We offer quarterly big meetings. We had one yesterday where we try to provide the support. We're really good about meeting, you know, helping to be responsive. Um, Zach Carter is a coach on our team. He helps people if they want personal coaching on top of that. We have the, the group coaching that we offer. And here's the coolest thing. You can stay in it forever. Not that I want you in it forever, but if you need it, I always update all of my digital programs every couple of years as they need updates. I'm already keeping a list of the updates that I'm excited to add to the next version. You get to keep the old version. You get the new version. So we get to stay connected forever. And that's a good um, investment. Um, one real thing. He, heal your brain from porn is a real thing. And it does work. Uh, we have, you know, go check out the reviews on Google. If you type in Dr. Mm -hmm. Trish Lee, these are people who have taken the program. Um, mm -hmm. I can verify um, as a review, you know, it, it absolutely changed my life. Um, so, you know, um, it, absolutely does work if you work it it's it's not something that you know just purchasing it and not doing any of the, the activities um but actually putting those into play um you will absolutely change your life and it's not just to leave porn behind but it really is to get on purpose in your life and enjoy the things be intentional about the things you're doing um so it's so much more than just, you know, leaving, leaving porn behind. Um, yeah, cool. I just wanted to mention that. Hey, Jane, um, there's a question about the summer program. The, is the workshop page <clears throat> up? Cause I know you're working on that. Yeah. She said that she would have that finished today. So um, I do have the link that I can put in for right now. Um, we have a summer program. Um, I sent out a, a mass email yesterday, and if anybody is interested in getting on our email list for updates and... Um, yeah, we send out weekly motivational um, emails to keep you inspired and then updates on what we have going on. It is in that, that email um, that I sent. Um, go to our website and you can... Um, just enter your email and get added to that list and anything that we have going on promotions. Um, this is our summer program that is only $19 and mm -hmm. it's um, less screen. No, more, more sun, sun, less, less screen. screens. <laughs> um, and it, um, like I said, $19. It's, it's really about um, getting things learning how to um, change routines in the summer while it's beautiful, getting out in the world. And, um, you know, it's harder to do that when the the days get shorter and it's cold outside. So if you learn those new routines now and put them into practice, by the time it does get, um, you know, to fall, winter, you already have those um in, you know, in your routine. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an amazing program. Um, I will send the link. I will actually also link it under the video. Um, so you can access it, you know, later. And um, as always, if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to info at drtrishley.com. Yeah. And you can check out, we've been trying to make TikTok videos, right? Eat for effort. I know I always say Yoda says, don't try do, which I'm doing, I guess. Uh, we've been making TikTok videos to try to create more awareness. Um, I actually, on my Instagram, I've been trying just to put more personal stuff to just inspire people by the things that I do on a daily basis as I'm doing them. 
So you can kind of check those things out there just to stay inspired. I see someone wrote in the chat box that they feel inspired already just by being here today. And it really is important to stay connected in the journey and you can stay connected with me through those other, you know, if you happen to be on them, you can stay connected in that way too. Um, and the summer programs are great way to get motivated through the summer. And was there anything else? What do you got going on this weekend, Jamie? Anything exciting? Swimming. I'm, I, you know, it's warm <laughs> outside again. So I, I love to swim. I've, I'm my daughter, we got her a bunch of swimming stuff, floats and oh. goggles and, you know, so just being able to be outside and enjoying the weather. So um, my son Seamus wants to learn how to play baseball. If there's any baseball fans out there. So I signed him up for baseball camp next week, but uh, he and I right now, it's like, what is it outside? It's 88. It's toasty here in North Carolina, but um, we're going to go play some baseball right now, get them ready for baseball camp. Thank you everybody for coming. SM Hassan, hello to you too. Uh, thank you so much, Nowhere H. Um, I'll take all the blessings I can get, especially on this adventure here. Um, thank you so much everybody for joining us. And we've already planned another one of these sometime soon. And I will get to Jamie, if you would please make a note that someone asked a question about gaming and porn. They're highly related and I, we will definitely, we should probably do a featured um, live about that because that's really important. So, all right. Thank you everybody for being here with us. Um, don't control your brain and it'll control you, right? Yeah. One you, other you, thing. Um, mm -hmm. We are doing a giveaway and it is to get the uh, summer program um, to earn a, you'll get in this giveaway a, Digital, this digital program is a summer program. You get one coaching call with Dr. Lee. You will get a free um, Muse S Gen. Is it Gen S? Yes, the new Gen. I forget what they, yes. how they say it. Um, and, um, but it's, you know, a, a bunch of free things. If you are interested in, you know, entering that contest, you know, do get on our email list because we'll be sending out details for that uh, shortly. Um, so I hope y'all all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for coming and we'll see you next time. Yep. Sounds great. Okay. Bye everybody. Thanks.